Hello Divination and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to creatively highlight your membership deals in Divi. So this is the final design we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. Okay, so before we start, we need to download all the tutorial files. So what I'll do is I'll link to the post in the show notes below. And once you've uh, gone to the post, you can just scroll down because um, the download part of it is right here. Okay, so all you need to do if you haven't entered your email before is to enter your email right here. So I'm just going to enter my email address to download these files and then click on download. Okay. So now we have this uh, pink button which says download files. Go ahead and click on that. So as you can see, it's downloading right here and the download has completed. So that's all we need to do for now. Next, I'm going to go over here to my website and create a new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages, click on add new. So I'm just going to call my page membership deals, click on use the Divi builder, and then we're going to go straight into the visual builder. So the first thing we're going to do here is to add a gradient on our section. So I'm going to come over here to the top left and click on section settings, background, and we're going to click the second tab and then click this plus button. Okay, so over here on my first color, I'm going to add my color, but this color here is going to be an RGBA value. So to get my, to switch to RGBA over here, I just need to drag this slider here and then all I need to do now is to paste my value between these brackets. Now, if you want to use the exact same colors, uh, I will link to the post in the show notes below so you can go and copy those exact colors. Okay, so now it's time to add our second color. So I'm going to click over here. And because this one is a hexadecimal value, I'm just going to paste it as it is. And there we go. Right, so the next thing now is to make sure that we have our linear gradient. But what we're going to change is the gradient direction. So right now it's set to 180 degrees. So we want this to be 165 like that. Okay, next uh, we also need to adjust the end position to 36%. So I'm just going to type 36 in here like that. And that is how we want it to look. Right, so the next thing we need to do now is to add our background image. So I'm going to click this um, third tab click the plus button, and then we're going to click on upload files. Now, remember, we downloaded those uh, uh, images from, from the post, so we need to add them onto our media library. So I'm going to click on select files, and then I'm going to navigate to my downloads folder. So over here, these are the images. I'm going to just going to click this drop down, and to make things easier for me, I'm just going to add all these images just in case I might need to use them later. Okay, so now all my images are being um, uploaded. Excellent. So the image I'm going to need is this one right here. So I'm just going to click on it and then I'm going to click upload an image. So now we can see the images in the background. Now we're not done yet because that gradient we did is not visible here. So in order for this to be to work, we need to come over here to the um, blend mode and change this to multiply. So now we can see we have this really cool effect. So the next thing we're going to do now is to add our section dividers. So I'm going to click on design dividers. So we're going to add the dividers to the top and the bottom. So right now we're on the top by default. So let's look for our divider style. So I'm going to click this drop down and the style I'm going to go with is let's go with this one. So I'm going to select it and I also need to add my color. So I'm going to click here on this eyedropper tool. And my color is going to be an RGBA value. So I'm just going to drag this down and I am going to paste my value between the brackets just like that. Next, we're going to change our divider height to 700. So I'm just going to type it in here. And then finally, you just need to make sure that your divider arrangement is underneath section content. Okay, so now it's time to do the bottom one. So I'm going to click the tab for the bottom and uh, let's look for our divider style. So I'm just going to click this drop down again. And this time I'm going to go with this one. Now the RGBA, uh, the color is going to be an RGBA value. So I'm going to click this eyedropper tool and then I'm just going to drag the slider again as I did before and paste my value between the brackets just like that. And this time our divider height is going to be 430 pixels. Now let's go to the spacing because as you can see here, we don't see much of our image. So I'm going to come over here to spacing and we're going to add some padding. So let's start off with padding top. So for the padding top, I'm going to add 130. And for the bottom, we're going to set this to 65. 
So I think all is set now. Let's go ahead and add our row. So I'm going to save this for now. And then I'm going to click this plus button and uh, choose my column structure. Okay, so the column structure I'm going to go with is with two equal halves. So I'm going to select that. And before I add any modules, let's go and add some settings to our row. So I'm going to click on the row settings, click on design, and we're going to make this full width. So I'm going to just click here and make sure that this is set to full width. Okay, so now let's start adding our modules. So I'm going to go ahead and save. So I'm going to click this plus button and search for my text module, select it. And um, this is where my title is going to go. So I'm just going to get rid of uh, some of this because this is a bit too much. Okay, so now I'm going to make uh, further adjustments to my text. So I'm going to click on the design tab, text, and then I am going to change my text font. So my text font is going to be ABZ. So I'm just going to search for it. I'm going to select it. And then my text size is going to be set to 56. So I'm just going to enter it in here. Next, I'm going to change my text color. So I'm going to click this eyedropper tool and paste my hexadecimal value in here. Now, as I mentioned before, if you want to use the exact values as I'm using in this tutorial, I will link to the post in the show notes below. So now let's go on to our line height and our line height needs to be set at 1 EM. Right, so over here on the text orientation, we're going to make sure that this is centered just like that. So for this text module, we're going to need a bit of tech, a bit of spacing on the top. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to come over here to sizing. And in fact, no, I need to go to spacing. And for the top, I need to add 50 pixels. Okay, so this is uh, all done now. I'm going to go ahead and save. And the next thing we're going to do here is to add another text module. So I'm going to click this plus button and search for my text module. Select it and this is our dummy text, so I'm fine to go ahead with that. So the next thing I want to do is to click on design and let me start by adjusting our text size. So right now it's on 16, that's perfect. And uh, for the color, I'm going to set this to white. And then for the line height, I'm going to set this to 1.4. And as we did before on the text orientation, let's set this to centered. Now, right now we can see that uh, this can be actually adjusted because the size is a bit too big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the sizing and reduce the width of that. So I'm just going to bring this down to about 70%. Okay, so that looks much better now. And then uh, all I have to do is to, is to center it. So moving on, let's go ahead and save. And this time we're going to add the call to action uh, module. So I'm going to click this plus button and search for my call to action. I'm going to select it. Right, so with our call to action, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change my title and then I'm going to remove this background because this looks out of place. So I'm going to come over here and say no to background color and then I'm just going to do a few adjustments to my text. So I'm going to come over here to design, title text. So first of all, we're going to make all our text uppercase. We're going to add some letter spacing. So we're going to set this to about five pixels. Yeah, I think that looks fine. And we're going to reduce the size a bit because that's a bit too big. Right, so let's bring it down to about 16. And also making sure that the text alignment is centered. So that looks all good. All right, so with that set, let's go ahead now and save. So the next thing we're going to do is to add an image. So I'm going to come over here and click this plus button and search for my image module. Right, so now it's time to upload our image. So I'm going to click here in this image area. And this is the arrow that we need. Click upload an image. Now we need to do a bit of a few customizations to this. So I'm going to come over here to design, sizing, and we're going to change the size and bring it down all the way to 13%. So what we need to do now, as you can see, this arrow here is all the way down here. So what we need to try and achieve here is to make sure that this arrow is next to the call to action, which is what's your choice. So to do that, we need to add some negative margins. So I'm going to come over here to spacing and I am going to add minus 100. So as you can see, it's up. But you see, in your case, if this is not really lined up, you can always uh, play around with these settings. So you can use the dial as well and just may, just tweak it until this is in line, just like that. Now, finally, what we need to do is to disable this arrow on mobile devices and tablets. So I'm going to come over here to visibility and disable it on the phone and the tablet. Okay, so now I can go ahead and save. Right, so now it's time to add our second row, but this row now is going to have all our membership items. So I'm going to come over here to add our row and the column structure we're going to go with is this one right here. I'm going to select it. 
So before we add anything in here, let's go in and make some adjustments to our row. So I'm going to go to my row settings, design, and then I'm going to come over here to alignment and make sure that the row alignment is all the way to the left. Next, we're going to come over here to sizing because we need to give this a custom size. So I'm going to go ahead and select use custom width, and I'm going to set this to 1030 like that. And then we're also going to come over here to the gutter width say yes to the gutter width and we're going to set this to one. Now the reason why we're set, setting this to one is because we don't want any gaps between our columns. Right, so let's save and then in column two we need to add a blurb module. So I'm going to click this plus button and I am going to select my blurb. So over here on the image and icon we need to add our own image. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to click this area here and this is the image that we need to use. So I'm going to select it, click upload an image. And then next, we're going to come over here to the background and we're going to add a background color. So let's add white as our background color. Next, let's uh, go to the design tab and make some changes to our title text. Right, so let's start over here with uh, font weight. So we're going to make this ultra bold, uppercase. And we also want the text alignment to be centered. And as you can see, this black is way too dark. So I'm going to come over here and just change that color. So I'm going to paste my value in here. And as you can see, this is much better and it blends with our color scheme. Now let's go to our body text settings. So I'm going to collapse the title text, click on body text. So the first thing we're going to do here is to just make sure our body text alignment is centered and the size this time is going to be 11. And then let's also add our color. So I'm going to paste it like that. Right, so let's go over here to the sizing and we're going to also make some changes to our image width. And we're going to bring this down to about 50%. So I'm just going to drag this. Okay, so that's about 50%. So for our content width, we're going to set this to 250. So what we can also do here is we can go ahead and add different sizes for different screens. So right now I can set my width for my desktop to about 72. And then I'm going to click this little icon here. And I'm going to go into the tablet tab and set this to 50% because as you can see here, it's way too big. So let's change it here like that. So that looks much better. And then for the smartphone, we're going to set this to 99, just like that. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the desktop. So the next thing we need to do is to come over here to the spacing because we really need to position this uh, in the right place. So to achieve that, we're going to use negative margins. So let's start off with our top margin. So we're going to set this to minus 380 so you can see now everything has been pushed up just by adding our negative margin and uh, for our left margin i want to set this to minus 180 and then now it's time to add our padding so i'm going to start off here with our padding top which is going to be about 30 pixels and then we're going to go to padding right and um, add 10 pixels over here and then 30 to the bottom and 10 to the left Okay, so that looks much better now. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to come over here to the border and we are going to add some rounded corners. So let's start off with 20 and see how that looks. Wow, so that looks even much better. So add 20 to your rounded corners. And then next, we're going to go to the box shadows. So I'm going to click here on the box shadow and this is the one I'm going to go with. So I'm going to select it. Right, so let's go ahead and save. And now we are going to add a button module. Right, so I'm going to come over here and add our button. So I'm going to click this plus button and select my button module. And uh, we're just going to say go on the text over here. And next, we're going to go to design and we are going to make some more customizations to this button. So because as you can see here, it doesn't fit very well with our design. So I'm going to click over here on button and we need to make to make sure we activate use custom styles for button because this is what gives us all our options to customize our button. So let's activate that. Right, so let's start off by adding our button text. So this is going to be 14 pixels because we just, we just need this nice and small. Right, so next we're going to add our button text color. So I'm gonna click this eyedropper tool and paste my value in here, just like that. And then for the button background color, we're gonna make sure that this is set to white, just like that. So we don't really need a border for this. So I'm just gonna set this to zero. And for the, border for the border radius, we're going to set this to 10. Right, so now let's go on to the font settings. So over here on the font weight, we're going to make sure that this is set to ultra bold. So now let's go over to the spacing. Because as you can see, the button is really close to 
uh, module here on the top. So I'm going to click on spacing and we're going to add a margin of about 20. So I'm just going to use the dials this time so I can see as I'm dragging this. Okay, so that's our margin top. So for our margin bottom, I'm going to set this to 50. Okay, just like that. And then for our margin left, we're going to set this to minus 100. And now it's time to add our padding. So because it's going to be a same value, so I'm just going to activate my chain and just add 30 like that because that applies it to both sides. Okay, so moving on, we've done with the spacing now. Let's go ahead and add our box shadow. So I'm going to click on box shadow and choose my shadow just like that. Right, so let's go ahead and save. So what we need to do next is we are going to have a similar design of what we've just done here over here in the second column. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to clone this and then just drag them into position. Right, so we need to go in and also make some adjustments to this. So I'm going to click on the settings because the image here that we have is the same. So we want to change that. So we're going to come over here to image and icon. I want to click this gear icon and select a different image. Click upload an image. So now we can see that these two are now different. So I'm going to save. And also, we want to change the titles here because right now they don't reflect what we're trying to do here with the membership site. So this one here is going to be called Professional. And over here, it's going to be called Starter. Right, so on this one here, on the second one that we've just uh, added, uh, we want to make this a bit different. So let's go into the module settings. So how we're going to differentiate this is by changing the background color. So right now we have this as white. So let's delete the white and let's do something a bit different here. So I'm going to come over here to my gradient tab, click the plus button, and we are going to add a color here. So I'm going to paste my hexadecimal value just like that. And then for my second color, I am going to click on the second tab here and paste my color as well. So our gradient direction here is fine at linear, but we want to change the angle at to 159. Now, as you can see, our text is now difficult to read. So we need to go in and change that text. So I'm going to come over here to design. So I'm going to come over here to my title text and I'm going to change my color to white. And already that's looking great. And then I'm going to come over here to my body text and do the same thing. So I'm just going to choose white from here. So now we can read the text on this gradient background. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is to change the spacing of that blurb module. So I'm going to come over here to spacing and let's play around with these values. So I'm going to start off by adding 470 to my margin top and make sure it's a minus. Okay, like that. And then for the left, I'm going to set this to minus 260. And what we can also do here is we can go to this little icon and set the sizes for the tablet and the smartphone. So what I'm going to do here is for the left, I'm going to set this to 35%. And for the phone, I'm going to set it to 20%. Right, so for the margin top, so over here, I'm going to set this to zero. And for the tablet, I'm also going to set this to zero. Right, so the reason why I'm doing that is because they shouldn't be side by side because they're difficult to, um, to position. Okay, so that was, that's looking much better now. So next, we need to change the spacing of the button module. So I'm going to go ahead and save this now and go into the button. So I'm going to click on my module settings, design, and I'm going to select my button. So I'm going to scroll all the way down here until I get to my spacing. And we are going to change our margin top to 20. In fact, we can list this as it is. That's fine. But for our margin left, we need to set this to minus 180. So I'm going to go in here and, pay, and uh, add minus 180. And we might as well make our adjustments for our mobile phones and tablets. So I'm going to click this little icon, click on tablet. And um, here we're going to set it to 53%. And for the phone, we're going to set it at 50%. Okay, so that's looking great. So you can see here that it's centered. So I'm going to go back to my desktop. So pretty much that's what you do if you want this to look great in all these different uh, screen sizes. So pretty much this looks great. I want to go ahead and save. And then we are going to publish our page. So I'm going to come over here, click on publish. And this is how it looks. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. And if you have any questions, please do leave them in the comments box and I will do my best to respond to those questions. Until next time, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.